In the last 23rd session, we talked about the keyword of passion for the virtue of passion. In this session, we will talk about curiosity. In this session, we will talk about curiosity, owner spirit, record, determination, composure, customer, faithfulness, and devotion. The dictionary concept of curiosity is a mind that wants to know something new or something amazing or unknown. Curiosity is a characteristic that makes human beings worthy of being human. Albert Einstein said, I am not a genius. I am just curious. Stendhal, 783 1842, said, Passion is not a realistic image of the other, but a product of love for a fictional perfect image, and the fundamental element of enthusiasm seems to be intellectual curiosity rather than sexuality, as I think. Curiosity or brothers. It is curiosity to know what others desire. Koreans are the most curious people in the world. It is curiosity to appear almost without exception in the records of the Western people who visited Korea in the blooming period. In 1860, Catholic missionary Dabulu said, The Koreans are curious and want to know one of the smallest things and want to tell it to others. In 1892, American missionary G.W. Gilmore said, The unique characteristics of the Korean people are curiosity. The German reporter, Siegfried Gente, who visited Korea in 1901, said that he had prepared for the incredible curiosity of the Korean people before visiting Korea. He showed openness to curiosity. Travelers who visited Korea and traveled so far have complained about unbearable interest and excessive curiosity because they have not been able to deal with it enough. It is true that the villagers are surprised as much as we are surprised. But such curiosity has never been a hindrance. Their curiosity originated from goodwill, and there is no intention to harm or upset people. In 1904, the American socialist Jack London wrote, The prominent character of Koreans is curiosity. They like to snoop. Westerners' testimony about the curiosity of Koreans continues through the 2000s, more than 100 years after that. French novelist Bernard Berber wrote in 2004 that, Koreans are full of curiosity. They look for newness with open eyes and open minds like a child. Now Koreans have begun to notice their merits. The lexicon of ownership is the thought to leave the family or group with responsibility. A sense of ownership is an idea that recognizes that you are the master and that you can act responsibly. So a saying that one sick master is better than ten servants. The owner's consciousness is contrasted with the consciousness of the servant. The owner consciousness is done by oneself, but the consciousness of the servant only is what is ordered to do. You have to think that you are the owner who takes full responsibility for your company's performance. In 1924, during a Japanese colonial period, Osun An said in his article of Are You a Master? or a stranger, that the true owner should have a spirit of eternal responsibility for this nation's society. The responsible person is the true master. It is also an expression of the master spirit. Wherever you are, if you become a master yourself, it means that there is now the truth. It is time for you to have a sense of ownership that affectionately and personally thinks about your life. Just think of yourself as a master, not a salaried man who only gets paid, and act like a master. Ownership is not merely a virtue which is required in management of the enterprise. Consumers change quickly as the world changes rapidly. 
Now it has become an age in which a variety of products and services represent not only the economic power of consumers but also social status, cultural taste, and personality. In this environment, it is possible when companies develop and produce creative and market-leading products, and operate efficient corporations, and the individual achievement, passion, and challenge spirit are integrated into the organization. Outstanding achievement, passion, and challenging spirit means that each employee has to give meaning to their work and have a sense of ownership. It is the owner's consciousness to cherish the enterprise like the property of oneself and to raise the problem consciousness about the reality. When an individual pursues the utmost efficiency with his or her mind in his or her own business, the business can be efficiently operated. The German psychologist Maximilian Winkelmann conducted a tug-of-war experiment to measure the contribution of individuals in a group. He found an interesting phenomenon. In a one-on-one -on -one game, if the power of one player is 100, the total power decreases as the number of players increases. In other words, when two people participated, it was reduced to 93, and to three people, it decreased to 85, and when eight people came together, one person poured only 49. The collective psychological phenomenon, in which the contribution to each person decreases as the number of participants increases, is called Mingleman effect. Unlike one-on-one -on -one games where all responsibility and authority is given to himself, the theory is that a person does not do his best when he is considered as just one of many people. Among successful professional managers, there are many who have reached the top position by working in the attitude of master. It is not easy to think and behave like a master but they know that there is no more radiant tomorrow for those who work only as directed. The attitude of a servant as if he were a master is the best way to survive and must be a shortcut to become a master. When we look back, there is a missing truth even though we could be a master or a servant. We do not know when our luck would change from master to servant. We cannot be a master forever. How many outstanding servants are around us? If you are dreaming of success, you should be a master, not a salaried person working just what is ordered to do. Whatever you do, you are happy when you become the main character. If you think that you are the president of the company, you should not wait for the payday, but first think about what you will do to nurture the company. Study what you can do better with your colleagues, and be immersed in what you prepare for customer success. The salaried worker is working for 8 hours, but the president is working 24 hours a day. It and on vacation. Let's become the owner of our company. Let's think of it as mine, not others. Do not just be a spectator to watch, but be an actor who plays passionately on stage. Record's lexical concept is, to write something to leave it for later. For such writing, Professor and Jake Kim's Life White Paper, who is the head of the Graduate School of Environment at Seoul National University, has 360 pages of personal statistics, ranging from birth to 70 years of age, on 2,700 pages, 25 books, 780 articles, 121 research reports, and 18,327 students. Income was 12,691,110,000 won, and total expenditure was 119,866,000 won which was a surplus life of 784,230,000 won. Cigarettes smoked 20,988 packs and 21,149 bottles of alcohol were emptied. This is a personal record.
but it will be a glimpse into the social vision of one era. The memory of a person is limited, but records remain. Therefore, most of the successful businessmen ran into the management front, armed with post-it and diaries. They do not want to miss any of those brilliant ideas. The more you demand a creative society, the more you will shine. Interests and habits of Japanese memos are often evaluated as Japanese power. This recording culture is not created in a moment. This is a habit. Only the writer survives. So success is said to be proportional to the memo. Akihiro Nakatani of Japan, who wrote hundreds of books, is a memo freak to record even on his shirt. He makes a random note when a good idea comes up. Not to mention napkins from restaurants, toilet paper for the restroom, and notes on dress shirts in urgent situations. A good idea is more valuable than a shirt. Likewise, Edison left 3,400 notes throughout his lifetime, and he wrote one note in about 10 days. The geniuses of history, such as Franz Peter Schubert, who wrote thousands of memoirs for 30 years, and notes on clothes when they came up, might have stayed in the ordinary without the habit of memos and records. Recording is both a means of memory and a means of learning that shapes thought. The record takes a moment, but it is a great way to organize your thoughts. Hendrik Hamill's record, well known as the Journal of Hendrik Hamill, remains a valuable source of information on Korea's geography, customs, politics, military affairs, and education even after more than 360 years. Hamill was the secretary of the Dutch national flag, Spurwer, a trading ship. The ship sailed to the southern coast of Jeju Island on August 16, 1653, after drifting through the Taiwan Strait to the Nagasaki Sea Strait. There were 64 crew members aboard, while 28 were killed and only 36 survived in the sinking process. These men were exiled to Jeju, Nanjin, Seoul, Yosu, Sunchian, and Namwon, but in 1666, eight crew members escaped to Japan 13 years later. After going through Nagasaki, he went back to his homeland and submitted a record of the same period as a report and published it as a book. He poured out his aspirations and wrote a few notes, a line of writing, and a few words written by him in the subconscious mind. The energy constantly attracts the goal and eventually moves people in the world. So there are people who have changed their future and their fate with one memo with a strong aspiration. No matter how small a goal you plan, and when you achieve that goal, you have your own true confidence. Everything we call Chance is actually caused by unconscious messages sent to the world by the world. What people call luck or providence of God is inevitable that is generated by their own energy. And writing down your wishes or goals on paper is the most effective way of representing these messages. It conveys a message to itself and to the world to move forward like a green light of traffic lights. At this time, we emit energy waves, radio waves, vibrations, etc. To draw the necessary people or solutions to ourselves, and the world moves only to respond to our wishes. The people who told their story in this book say, Life unfolds as you write. I can do it and you can do it. Once you hold on to paper and pen and start writing, you will soon become as you wish. By using the power of recording properly, we cannot only achieve what we desire, but also enjoy it in our lives. You will be able to look into your true ability and inner self, and you will love yourself more in the process. If you start writing something on paper, you will know how to double your life. To make a memo well is your competitiveness. 
It is necessary to have a habit of always taking notes, not being so confident in your brain. A small notepad that you can hold in your hand, a journalist's notebook, is good for notes. Utilizing a voice recorder is also a good way to take notes. If you are in a difficult situation to write, or if you want to record more vividly than you can write on a smartphone, you can use any SNS, and you can even write with your voice. The dictionary concept of determination is the ability to make final judgment or to make conclusions. In the film Vertical Limit, while climbing a rock, the father died cutting off his rope on the rock to save his children. It was a decision of a father to save the son and the daughter by sacrificing himself in the situation where everybody was all but to die. That decision could be reckless, but without it, more sacrifices would have followed. The same goes for the rotten apple theory. If there is a rotten apple in an apple box, it must be removed quickly. Otherwise, all the other apples in the apple box will rot. When you make a decision, you have to think carefully, but you have to act fast. The most representative incident of the rapid decision is the incident of Napoleon Hill's 29 seconds. Napoleon Hill an ordinary college student dreaming of being a lawyer, worked as a guest reporter for a magazine, and was interviewed by Carnegie, the richest man in the steel industry in the world. The 73-year-old Carnegie and the 20-year-old youth talked about the whole of Carnegie's life, philosophy and values three days and nights. And on the last day, Carnegie suggests the work of embodying his new philosophy. He answered to do it right away. And then Carnegie pulled his stopwatch and confirmed it took just 29 seconds, and said to Hill that if Hill did not make the decision in one minute, Carnegie would have withdrawn the proposal. He added that a person who cannot make such a decision in less than a minute cannot do anything well. Carnegie had already suggested the proposal to 260 persons, there was nobody who replied in a minute. Napoleon Hill became the most successful psychologist 20 years later. The choice of moment affects the lifetime. We live a deciding life every day, and that decision ultimately determines our life. In a way, Human history is the product of the great commitment of those who have endeavored to achieve something constantly. Those who are able to make such decisions are those who have demonstrated initiative that is not immature. To make a great decision is only possible if you have the ability to execute your dreams. The action of decision that execution follows is welcomed by others and it brings success to oneself. True commitment is setting goals and acting to reach them. There is no commitment without execution. It is only the true courage and determination that a determined person exercises his or her own priorities and exerts its influence, and effectively exercises and executes them. When Gaius Julius Caesar crossed the Rubicon, the word of a bowstring was thrown is a symbolic word of decisiveness even after 2,000 years. At the end of Goryeo dynasty, Song Dai Li refused the order of the king and created the chosen dynasty through the historical decision of army troop withdrawal in Waiwa Island. Akio Morita, a Sony founder, made the decision to produce the Walkman with the belief that he would create it, a thing that did not exist in the world. Contrary to all his subordinates' objection that it would not be sellable at all. He risked his title of chairman for selling more than 30,000 units. The result was an unimaginable worldwide flare. Edison also said, the moment we make our decision to do it, the sky begins to move. If you make a decision, it will lead to action and action will result. The decision of Ray Kroc was also dramatic. How did Ray Kroc, who lived a lifetime as a salesperson, make McDonald's such a big global company? 
Moreover, when he found a McDonald's restaurant and tried to franchise it, he was already 53 years old. It was the age of the 1950s when it was ludicrous to think otherwise than retire. He ran around the ridicule and ran something that would be so ridiculous. Is that easy? Without capital and no contacts, he was immediately pushed by competitors. What did Ray Kroc think at the time? There is no place to go if I fail in this McDonald's project. It is simply burning his bridge. The success of Ray Kroc's success depended on a simple word of all in. There was nothing to complicate. Decision is the key to success. There is always a decision behind great success. The three elements of the winner are fortune, judgment, and determination. The final element that makes a crucial distinction between the winner and the loser is determination. Depending on the decision made, the winner is divided into a continuous winner and a temporary winner. Success is a continuation of commitment. Navigator is a risk taker. It is the man who commands the speed and direction in which the ship can go in the storm. They know that they have to go through the storm. They know that staying in the storm is the greatest danger. It is the greatest risk not to risk. They know the ship will sink if they only operate the way they always did without wind. They will take the risk and take the key. If you sit still in the boat with a storm, there is just ruin. There is an old saying that there is no coward soldier under the control of a great general. Composer's dictionary concept is a state of being abundant in material, space, and time. There was a musician who visited the psychiatrist. The contents of the consultation are too much work, so he could not rest a bit. As a result, his body was so damaged starting from insomnia to indigestion. Because it was impossible to diagnose or treat by internal medicine, he finally consulted the psychiatrist. The doctor said in a word, you must rest. But the musician replied that he could not rest because he had too much work. The doctor asked the musician, what is the most important one among musical scores? Musicians, of course, said that all musical scores are important. So what do you need in the music? The musician did not answer. The doctor said, comma. A score without a comma is a dead score. Without a comma, there is no performance itself. It is the same in life. A comma is also necessary in life. If you drive a few hours, you should stop by a rest area. If you work in a rural area, you have to take a break because you are in the middle. In the labor law, rest time of more than 30 minutes is required for 4 hours and more than 1 hour for 8 hours. Furthermore, one day a week is designated as a weekly holiday to have enough rest. Employees who work more than 80% a year are entitled to 15 days paid annual leave. In addition, each company has taken the following measures to ensure that it is appropriate to take a vacation in the summer by making the following holiday system. A comma in life that slows down tensions in life and restores exhausted mind and body is essential for human life. Workers do not distinguish between work, hobbies and leisure. Work is to get paid, hobby is to spend my money while leisure is just to please. Leisure is also a pause. It is a system that regenerates naturally by restoring body and mind and restores health as it becomes a life force. We are under stress when we do things. It is rather strange if you do not take any stress when you do what you are ordered to do, instead you do what you want. There is also pleasure in not doing anything. Like a car with an accelerator and a brake, you have to control your work and rest. Otherwise, the engine breaks down and the body and mind are destroyed. However, 
It is a problem that the physiology of the organization does not tolerate people who are at rest. People who are well off are doing well, but people in old days considered being well off as idle ones time away. So the workers feel uneasy about resting. Won't my place go away while I'm away? What if someone else takes my job while I'm away? I cannot even use my vacation because I feel uneasy about it. Even if they go on vacation, we can see they are working on the internet or smartphone. In Japan, there were many cases of giving up vacation once. It is because of the anxiety that they would not be necessary if things go well without them. With the development of mobile smart devices, division of the night and day are gone and the world changes into working 24 hours a day. In the era of smart work, wherever and whenever they are working, individuals and organizations need to look back on the meaning of commas. When farming in the countryside, the plants under the street lamps are blunt but cannot bear fruit. Everything with life tells us that dark energy is needed as well as bright energy. People also have to sleep at night, have a rest a week, and rest a month or so a year. This is because you can look back on yourself and look at your life's journey. Productive leisure activities are needed to unplug and recharge for a while. Having enough sleep is one of the most effective ways to recharge. Sufficient sleep and productive leisure activities are key to utilizing self-interest and making our lives more special. We call the time besides working time leisure time. Leisure is a term in Chinese in which remains and spare are combined to mean a time remaining. In English, it is indicated as leisure, spare time or free time. If we divide the time of life by a dichotomous view into work and leisure, the quality of life seems to depend on how to use leisure more than work. The reason that Einstein puts play as a factor in the equality of success is that you do not just think of play as a special time. In other words, you have to think that play is as important as work, and it means to enjoy playing and play hard as well as work hard. Play is a virtuous cycle with work. It is a synergistic relationship. People who play well are usually good at work. Customer's dictionary concept is the guest who comes to shop for something. Impressing one customer would offer an opportunity to secure 250 favorable customers, but the other way would make 250 enemies. Customers tell six people if they are satisfied with a product or service. But if they are unsatisfied, they spread it to 22 people. In the era of internet and wireless communication, the spread of rumors spreads across the whole country and across all over the world in an instant through the netizen's keyboard. Legendary sales King George Gerard told the law of 250 people. It is a rule that one person has the power to propagate at least 250 people. Impressing a single customer has the opportunity to get 250 friendly customers, but in the opposite case, it creates 250 enemies. Customer, change, competition, and creativity is called for C. It means that only creative individuals and organizations survive while satisfying customers, leading change, and leading the competition. Because a world is not where living alone, customers are everything of individuals and organizations. The president does not pay the salary, but the customer does. Even your customers can fire you. So everybody except you is the customer. Your child is a customer, and your parents are customers. Your boss is a customer and your subordinates are customers. Not only consumers but also everyone who has a relationship with you are customers.
not only people but also organizations, corporations, associations, and nations can all be included in the customer's category. You must create value for these customers. Beyond customer satisfaction, you have to lead to customer impression and customer success. If you do not impress your customers and succeed, you cannot survive. Customer success can only be realized if you are interested in customers. The case of Charlie Chaplin and a bottle of wine makes us feel the power of customer impression and customer success. When Chaplin was working in an iron factory at days of anonymity, the boss asked him to buy bread. And after supper time, his boss opened the bag of bread that Chaplin had brought, which contained a bottle of wine with bread. The boss asked, what is this wine? Chaplin said, you have always been going to drink wine after work. But today, the wine seems to have run out, so I bought both. It is a natural phenomenon that Chaplin, who impressed his boss, the customer, became a successful actor. It is true that Harley Davidson does not sell motorcycles but sells images of freedom and rebellion to customers. Customers buy a challenging spirit through Nike and buy a cup of refined leisure time from Starbucks. Customer needs have changed, customer level has improved, and customer change has accelerated. If it goes wrong, there is no guaranteed survival with no growth. To survive, you must change. You have to read your customers' emotions and implement them correctly. You have to exceed numbers, statistics, and analysis. You have to empathize with your customers and break the crisis with your imagination. Peter Ferdinand Drucker said innovation is finding new deficiencies in existing knowledge, products, customer needs and markets and turning them into new and much more productive. Innovation in a firm can be divided into innovation of products and services, innovation of market and consumer behavior and values, and innovations related to all kinds of technology in the process of delivering products to customers. This innovation will create new value for the company. The doctor mentioned the very first of four strategies for exploring new markets that bring innovation to customer value creation. Creating customer value is the goal of the business and the ultimate goal of economic activity. To create these customer values, you must create utilities that satisfy what your customers want and need and price them according to their value. It must be innovation based on the customer's reality, and it should be able to provide value to customers. Businesses are getting new product ideas, advertising ideas and slogans that are useful to customers, said Alvin Toffler. This word, which expresses the power of the prosumer, refers to a customer who supplies the nutrients needed to sustain life when a company is compared to an organism. The era of the invention of the past was production-oriented management. It has changed into a sales-oriented management and now it is the era of creation. In the era of creation, the pattern must change by human, customer-oriented management. In order to achieve differentiation, the attitude of focusing on customers is fundamental. You can generate new things only after you clearly identify your customers and seriously consider what they are. If you are an organizer's navigator, you need to figure out what your customers need in the future. The dictionary concept of faithfulness is working diligently. The secret to success of insurance planners who received high salaries was, above all, sincerity and credit. According to a survey, 56% of the respondents said sincerity and credit, followed by 13% of their financial knowledge, 13% of their connections and only 7% of help around. 
In general, the connections in the surrounding help that most of the designers consider is a reliable capital for their sales activities do not seem to have a strong influence on their sales activities. Benjamin Franklin was born in Boston's poor family and received only two years of formal education, but he is considered to be the most representative of self-esteem through thorough self-management. His teachings, which were intended to lead to happiness through constant self-reflection and enlightenment, good and virtuous life, are referred to as the origins of successive genealogy. Besides the fact that 13 virtues in the Franklin's planner have been the foundation of American spirit, Franklin's life is showing not only the success of business but also the principle of building wealth and happiness. Diligence is the first principle of Franklin's success. The saying that, heaven helps those who help themselves, also means that diligence is the natural law of success. You have to work hard and study hard. Most of the lessons in school are diligence and sincerity. If you are diligent and sincere, you do not starve at least. Sincerity is sometimes criticized as being foolish, and the upright as being inflexible, but thanks to those foolish and inflexible people, this much level of life could be maintained. The Republic of Korea is recognized as the most diligent nation in the world. The universal key to success can be surprisingly simple, and it may be a cliché that has been constantly spread from people's mouths since ancient times. Samuel smiles as the wisdom of living the best in life finds the key in personal labor and diligence. Rather, wealth and happiness are pouring out of labor and hard work. It appears that a well-organized, well-planned, sincere, and meticulous person lives longer than an impulsive and improvised person. A research team led by Professor Howard Friedman of the Department of Psychology at the University of California, Los Angeles, conducted a survey of more than 20 research data on 8,900 patients in the United States, Canada, Japan, Germany, Norway and Sweden. Professor Friedman said, attentive and sincere people have an average of four years of life longer because they do not act recklessly, even with risk taking their healthy health habits compared to those who are not. People who are planning to live sincerely have a job and home life in harmony, he said. They do not feel any stomach ache or heavy drinking, and they feel less stressed. Those who cannot control their emotions are stressed and their health is likely to deteriorate due to their unhealthy lives. Effective management of equally distributed 24 hours a day should start with finding the obstacles that are blocking the management itself. It is necessary to reduce the abuse time by correcting the habitual errors that derive from the destruction of self-excuse and nonsense, and by making changes accordingly. As a first method for this attempt, the author emphasizes setting up a time map. By using time maps well, you can see how you are living a balanced life and you can demonstrate the wisdom of placing your day's work in consideration of the efficiency of work. The basic ability to perform time planning derives solely from your diligence. Sometimes we think that we wish we could have a chance to come up with unexpected luck. That is the kind of luck that comes to change your life. But it is greed without subservience. Luck that can be obtained without effort is not common in the world, and if you could get material or fame with any luck, it's just like the sand in your hand. This is proven by the fact that a 20s who won the lotto lottery of 1.9 billion won while being wanted, was handcuffed again against stealing after losing all the money. Although the money received after tax was 1.4 billion won, his charge was that he attacked an employee in a PC room in Mawson City and took 200,000 won. 
The 1.4 billion won jackpot has dropped him to 23 at the criminal records in a year and a half. Sometimes when anything does not work well, we normally complain about whether I am the only one who suffers from it. What is the reason why you were not successful even though you are proud that you have lived more faithfully than others? The reason is your false and less sincerity. Could we call the sincerity sustained by overspeed and obsession the true sincerity? No, it is a fake sincerity. And we are sincere in our workplace, but we are unfaithful outside our workplace. If you are sincere in your work but not in your life, you are just half sincere. Do you think you can have success guaranteed with such half sincerity? It is far from enough. You, always working hard, I want to ask whether or not your sincerity is fake or half full. Also, is there any one of your colleagues who does not suffer from a large or small illness out of ones who are evaluated to be sincere around you? If so, our sincerity is no more than a dangerous sincerity to destroy the mind and body. Sincerity is piled up and stacked, and as it flows through the years, it naturally leads to success. Aging is needed, not speed. The dictionary concept of devotion is to fulfill the power to give body and mind. Devotion is the dedication of body and mind for oneself or for someone. We can see devotion in God's image and red dedication in the image of a mother who raises a child. Devotion is a beautiful flower that brightens society and becomes a life force. A small Catholic church in Mexico. A film of Nacho Libre, based on a true story of a priest covering up to 3,000 orphans while he served as a professional wrestler hiding his identity, makes sense of devotion. The Wizard of the Storm, having played wrestling games in Golden Mask for 23 years, was a priest named Sergio Gutierrez. He became a middle-aged man of 53 years old took off his mask when he was retiring and then everybody got to know that he was a priest. What a touching scene. The devotion of the priest who gave his body and mind and gave his dream and hope to the young orphans is the beautiful flower of this society. In 1921, Kane Summit Hospital in Pennsylvania made an amazing history. Dr. Evan O'Neill Kane, a seasoned surgeon, was the first to use the local anesthesia technique to successfully undergo surgeries. Dr. Kane was a reformer who claimed that local anesthesia was much safer than conventional methods using general anesthesia. However, his colleagues were suspicious of his theory and were reluctant to test local anesthesia for their patients. Dr. Kane's patients also did not welcome the idea that they would be the subject of experimental research. Dr. Kane constantly sought out volunteers to prove his theories and finally found a candidate who would be willing to experiment. The surgery proceeded as planned and after the surgery the patient complained of just minor complaints and nothing happened. Two days later the patient was discharged. Thanks to a brave volunteer, Dr. Kane proved that local anesthesia is not only a substitute for general anesthesia, it was also much better. However, Dr. Kane himself was the courageous volunteer who was the target of the surgical experiment. He did his first surgery using local anesthesia. He is devoted to his beliefs and willing to be patient to gain the trust of other patients. Other doctors were only interested in whether the surgery could be successful, but Dr. Kane was so devoted to finding out for himself. It is a dedication to work hard for the role given to oneself, family, organization, and country. You can learn about the dedication to the nation in the image of Nangye who embraced a general of the enemy and jumped into River South and in the appearance of General Sun Chen Li who kept the country by his death asking soldiers not to announce his death.
At this moment, we can feel the dedication to the organization in the appearance of the sweaty workers giving up the night's sleep at the industrial site. Personal commitment begins with a clear, specific understanding of what you are trying to accomplish. People do not devote themselves because they do not understand specifically what they want to achieve in the workplace and in their lives. To achieve your goals, you must first draw your goals in your head and write them in your own words. Simply drawing in your head is not enough. Writing your goals will make it clear what you want to achieve. Writing your own goals is the beginning of your dedication to achieving your goals. You will be able to develop even more if there are people around you who choose to be dedicated and passionate. Why? We tend to use people with similar levels of purpose and commitment. How strong are you? Don't you move as soon as you want to devote? Most people do not know how strong they really are. They will only know their strengths when they choose to devote themselves beyond the level of mere interest to challenge what they think is impossible. The talents that our society demands are experts who have a passion for things, not mere technicians. Curiosity and attention to what is happening around them. They arm themselves with their own consciousness anytime and anywhere. By filling in the records and notes, they fill up the lack of memory. They make a decision after mature consideration, but when they come to conclusions, they are determined to execute immediately. In the midst of busy life, they go on a trip to find their spare time or create a proper comma. They think of the people around them as customers and do their best to make the customers successful. A sincere person is a wonderful person who leads not only oneself, but the people around him to happy success. No matter where he is, he is devoted to himself and contributes to the world.